Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are still on board the Carnival of Venezia and we are bringing you what we loved and what we hated on this ship. Yeah, and this is a pretty nice ship and I think there's a lot that we've loved. That We've taken eight cruises so far this year and we were talking last night, I think this is probably our second favorite cruise of the year. So that's pretty high, pretty yeah. pretty good <laughs> seal of approval for this, this cruise. First thing we want to jump into that we loved is just the luxury feel of the ship. There's so many Italian touches. It's a very different feeling ship than you'll see anywhere else, really. Yeah, I kind of feel like I'm in this luxury Italian, you know, hotel, villa, resort type thing. Everything just feels so nice. And it's not even a brand new ship, so it's not that. It's just everything just feels luxurious. They did a really good job with that. Yeah, it, uh, it, it's a very different feel than any other Carnival ship. So if mm -hmm. you kind of get tired of the same Carnival feeling, which they can all start to feel alike after a while, this one feels <clears throat> completely different than any yes, of the others. They, yes, they really take to heart that fun Italian style, which is what the, the slogan they're going with on this series of ships. Next one is going to be the number of bars and lounges on the ship. There are so many of them <clears throat> that you'll never get tired of going to them. This is true. Uh, this ship doesn't feel super crowded, even though there are a lot of people on board. And it doesn't feel super crowded because there are so many spaces for people to spread out in. Ton of bars, ton of lounges. There's something different to do in every single one. Um, plus the, you know, drinks and the activities, everything that they have. They've got it all kind of spread out. So it's really quite nice that they have so many bar and lounge spaces on this one. Yeah, we do have a video covering every single bar and all the new <coughs> drinks, drink packages, all that. If you want more detail on the bars, be sure to check that video out. Next thing that we love on this ship is that it is almost smoke-free, it feels like. It's not smoke-free, you can smoke on here, but the way they've designed it, they've got a casino and you can smoke in the casino, but like you can look into the casino, I thought, oh boy, that's an open casino. It's not <laughs> open though, there's glass, like, enclosure, enclosure all around it. All around it, so the smoke does not get out. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is the smoking area on the deck, which this is genius and brilliant. Why no other cruise ship has done this, I don't know. <laughs> but it's right at the very back of the ship, deck 11, the very back corner. If you're smoking back there and the ship is moving, the smoke just goes right off the back. <laughs> and it's like the simplest thing in the world to do, but why <laughs> ships put smoking areas in the in middle the of the shack, in the middle of the, the Lido deck? Uh-huh. Royal Caribbean, I'm looking at you for this. <laughs> you know, it's like, why would you do this? They put, they literally put the smoking area on the walking track. Mm -hmm. They actually makes did no that. sense. It's okay, wild. so <laughs> we've been on the ship like nine days. I think I've smelled smoke like once or <clears throat> yeah, twice. Very minimal. Yeah. So the great news is, if you love to smoke, you can do it. If you don't want to smell smoke you're not gonna smell it because yeah. you won't it's be actually there. a happy medium for everybody everybody's happy smokers you've got i mean it's a nice space back there on yeah, deck 11 nice. and you can smoke you know in part of the casino as well so if you want to just go for it you've got great spaces for it but if you don't want to you don't have to smell it yeah you're good to go so everybody's happy <laughs> problem solved <laughs> okay next uh next thing that we love about the ship is the variety of the food there are lots of different food choices. Not only do you have the buffet, that gives you lots of choices there, but you also have the pizza. You've got your uh, La Strada, which took place, took over Pig and Anchor, basically. Um, you do have Guy's Burger, you've got Tomodoro, you've got uh, the sandwich place that's open from 11 to 11. Uh, the main dining room, they have different brunches, and then of course all of the specialty restaurants. Uh, you're just not going to get tired. We've, are, we've been on here for over a week and we haven't really repeated meals and we haven't gotten sick of any of the food because there are so many different places to eat and things to eat. Yeah, the food variety has been amazing. It's Carnival <laughs> does some of the best of any cruise brand at that and this ship really does take it to another level because even if you've been on a carnival ships before 
you've got new options. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of new restaurants. We do have a video about that if you haven't seen it, all the new uh, food choices on here. So check that out. Next thing we love, <laughs> so and this has been great for us. Is you can tell because we've uploaded so many videos to our channel from the ship. And we're at sea, this is a transatlantic, so we're uploading in the middle, middle of the Atlantic, is the internet is very, very fast. Uh, we're talking the fastest that we've ever seen on a cruise ship. Now, that was about the first six days. The last two days, it has slowed down considerably to the point where it was more cruise shippy speed. <laughs> so Cruise shippy. <laughs> yeah, but we are like right dead set in the middle of the Atlantic between America and Europe. So now we're kind of wondering, is that how it's going to be when we get to America or is, is it going to be more like the faster internet speeds <clears throat> where we were getting up to 90 megabits per second mm -hmm. while we were sailing around in Europe? So what we'd like you to do if you're on this ship or you've been on this ship and you're watching this, leave us a comment how fast your internet speed was. Was it super fast? Was it super slow? Was it difficult? Just so other people can get an idea because most of these ships are going to be sailing out of New York. Mm -hmm. And so let people know. Give us some help because we're not in New York yet. So it may be different there. <laughs> be a few uh, days before we're yeah. there. <laughs> uh, so let people know how fast your internet speed is in the comments. We would really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But even as up until now, it is faster than... It's the fastest of all eight cruise ships we've been on mm -hmm. this year. Yeah, Even and I think the fastest upload speeds, too, because we've far. uploaded a ton of content, not just for the cruise channel, but we also have other YouTube channels, and we've been uploading to those as well. Not had any problems at all. Literally, they just zip right up. So that's been amazing. It has. Wow. Even on these sea days, the upload uh, speeds have maintained pretty quickly. Okay, now we're going to get to the things we've, mm. we've hated. Yeah. Uh, the first one is the pool areas are... And this is a big one. <laughs> the pool areas are really small. Mm -hmm. they're, there's no way to put it <clears throat> nicely. Mm -hmm. They're tiny. They are so tiny. As a matter of fact, the Lido pool is like a children's pool. <laughs> it is so small. And that's actually the only people who get in it. Because it is so tiny. And then... You know, the pool that they have in the back is also still really small. It's not that much bigger than the Lido pool. Combine the two pools together, and it's about the size of one pool on a regular carnival ship, which is yeah. insane. And they've got those separated. So there's just not enough pool space. Um, and really, they only have the two hot tubs in by the aft pool. And then there's two hot tubs up in the Serenity area, but that's for 18 and over. So there's only two hot tubs that are for everybody on the ship, not including the Terrazza Cabana hot tubs. And they are filled with kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those hot tubs are definitely filled with children. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's going to, I think it's even going to be more of an issue out of New York because mm -hmm. this cruise is transatlantic. It's a little colder. People aren't really getting in the pool. There's still not enough space. Uh, so I think in the <clears> summer, when you're going to the Caribbean, we'll see. Let us know how the pools work for you because it, it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like it's going to be good for us. Yeah, actually, a couple of staff members have said they think it's not enough not pool enough, space. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next thing we really didn't like was the TV channels are so bad. <laughs> I have a little note here I wrote. They're the worst TV channels at sea. It's like... Why do you even have this TV? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, they, they have... You know, sometimes you like to chill at night and just watch something on TV. There's not much of anything at I all. was hoping to watch a little bit of sports. You know, the NBA playoffs are going on, the NHL. <laughs> Usually on a ship, you'll get like one channel that's showing you some random thing. No, the only sports channel on this ship is Sky Sports. And not even Sky Sports that shows like <laughs> soccer or cricket or something. It's Sky Sports News. So all they're doing is literally talking about cricket. And it's not like, even showing it to us. Not even showing it. No, it's just the Sky Sports News about sports. So, yeah, you've got that. And you've got uh, the Food Network, which is just running mm -hmm. Guy Fieri 24 hours a day. Uh, yeah, that's about it. We like Guy, but not 24 hours a not day. 24 Sorry, hours buddy. <laughs> yeah, so, they, you know, and I know TV channels aren't that important to a lot of people, sure. but if someone in your group wants to watch something, 
this has not been. And as we mentioned, this is a transatlantic, so there's eight sea days total yeah. on yeah. this cruise. So you can only do so many things. Six of them are in a row across the Atlantic. <laughs> okay, so that that's you know we can get by that though. It's with the internet speed being so good, we've, we've yeah we're on just it. you know streaming stuff, so that works. Next things that we really hated were the elevators. <laughs> you guys. They have these new <laughs> elevators that are sweeping the world mm -hmm. where you hit the button, the number outside, and then it tells you which elevator to go to and you get on. There's no buttons, there's no numbers inside, it just takes you to the floor, which is great in theory. Sure. Mm -hmm. But when the ship is crowded, this just does not work because what's going to happen, and this is, <clears throat> you know, be patient, on your embarkation day, because this is what's going to be the worst, mm -hmm. and let everybody know how it's going to work, or you're going to have people like getting really upset and frustrated. Mm -hmm. Because what inevitably happens is everybody has their luggage that day. So the way these elevators work is you hit the button. So you're on floor five, and you need to go to ten. So you hit ten. It tells you to walk over to elevator A, because it kind of supposedly knows how many people are in there and it knows how many more people can go in there. What it doesn't know is that everybody in there is either in a wheelchair or has luggage with them. <laughs> so there's already three people in there. It thinks four more can get in, but the elevator shows up, doors open, you can't get in there. So now you've lost your spot and you gotta go back to the machine and hit deck 10 again. And now it's gonna tell you to go to elevator C. Well, there's already people at elevator C, so now you, Getting in line again, the same thing's gonna happen. You over can stand there for 30 over. minutes because every you, you don't keep your place in line. When you miss an elevator, you're basically right back at the beginning. So <laughs> or at the end. <laughs> it's super frustrating. Our advice is don't try to go up in the middle of the ship on embarkation mm -hmm. day. Walk to one of the ends, go up there. This kind of still happens on some sea days too, mm -hmm. where there's just there's too many people in the elevators, and the elevator system doesn't work. Plus you throw in the fact that half the people don't know how it's working. <laughs> so they're just getting on the elevator and trying to hit buttons that don't exist on the or inside. Or people just get on and say, what floor are you guys going to? Yeah, which floor is this one going <laughs> to? Try to ride up with you. Or you have people who get impatient and start dinging the different the panels. Elevators. And then they're supposed to get on like four different elevators. Well, that messes up the calculation. It's It turns into a whole mess because reason does not reign supreme in that process <laughs> so just be patient with the elevators uh especially don't be in a hurry <laughs> don't be in a hurry understand how they work yeah it'll, understand it'll, it'll be get, a minute it'll get better after that first day but the first day is pretty rough with these elevators so it is <laughs> uh, i don't think these elevators belong on a cruise ship no they're not our favorite we had these on the msc seascape also and it was really a struggle on that one yeah uh, another thing that we hated was the thermal suite or lack of thermal mm, suite. The or... non-existence of a thermal suite. Yeah. It's probably one of our favorite things on cruise ships. If you've seen our previous videos from years past, the thermal suite is my personal favorite and was super disappointed to see that there was no thermal suite at all. As a matter of fact, the whole spa area is really kind of drab, depressing, looking area honestly like almost it was an afterthought i don't know what if that was the original intention the gym is back there it feels dark and and kind of just jammed into a corner it's not very big and then as a peace offering of sorts there is a one person kind of jetted tub and a sauna in the female locker room and there's also one in the male locker room and then there's a shower that's pretty much it yeah and i'm gonna throw one bonus thing we didn't like <coughs> which is the buffet people have been asking about the buffet why haven't we shown the buffet there's not much to show it'd be like a 15 second video uh, we'll show it to you right here <laughs> but the buffet <laughs> just isn't really the the focal point of the mm -hmm. ship and that's fine because everything else all the other food is amazing but if you're like a huge, I only eat at the buffet person, you might rethink that because you will the, be disappointed. the other restaurants are way better than the buffet. So uh, that's it though. That's not super negative because the other food is amazing. Mm. 
But uh, that's all yeah. of it, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much it, what we loved and what we hated on the Carnival Venezia. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can also check out our other channels and leave us a comment down below if you have any questions about any of these and give us a like. Guys, we will maybe see you on the next ship.